Hey everyone, so here's a quick video on how to secure your project properties in Mule 4. This is running in Studio 742 and on Mule uh, EE 4.2.2. So before jumping into the process, let me give you a little bit of background around why you need to secure your properties. So when you build a project within Studio, generally you'll be incorporating the properties directly into the configurations of the connector, or you'll be pulling those into a external properties uh, file and you have those pro um, properties there. Uh, and these can of course be passwords that are in plain text. So generally, um, if you are gonna be uploading this project back into you know source control like GitHub, um, you wanna make sure that you secure these properties by encrypting them. Or if you're gonna be sharing this project with a partner or a customer or you know another user, you wanna make sure that you encrypt these pro properties so um, you know they're not gonna be out there in plain text. So. Uh, let's go ahead and kind of run through the process. So for this example here, I have a simple flow that has a, a database call um, and it has the properties currently in a mule properties file. So what we're going to do for the project is we actually need to new, add a new component. We're going to go to exchange. Uh, we're going to type in secure and we're going to add in the mule secure configurations component. We're going to click on finish. And you can see it doesn't have any operations available. So what we actually need to do is go into the global elements and click on create here and search for secure. We'll click OK. And in here, we need to go ahead and point it to that uh, YAML file that we have for our properties. So we'll go ahead and search for it. You'll notice for the location browser, it's not going to pull up all the, the files for you. So uh, generally what I do is just go ahead and type in star YAML again, and then it pulls back the, the file that I'm looking for within my project. So I'll go ahead and select that file and I click OK. And then for the key, so the key is important. Uh, the key is what you pass into the Mule runtime on instantiation. So before the Mule application spins up, you're, you're going to actually have it uh, pass it a key that that runtime is going to use to decrypt the file and allow the application know um, what that actual value is for the connection. So in this case, generally what I do is actually put it in another property here and I'll call it um, secure key. And then everything else I generally leave uh, the same by default, right? You can you know uh, keep these blank here for the algorithm. You will need to know this later on. So again, by, uh, by default, I'll leave the AES for the algorithm and the CBC for the mode by default and then click on OK. okay. And then uh, additionally, I'll go back through and remove the old configuration properties and then I'll click on save. So once we have that set up, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and um, get the encrypted properties based off of that key or a key that you're going to be using for the instantiation at runtime. So uh, before you encrypt the files, you're going to actually need to download an external jar file that you need to actually encrypt that uh, payload. So in our documentation, if you search for secure configuration properties, you'll be brought to this page. And in this page, you're gonna go ahead and find the file that you need. So you can download the jar file from here. And there are three different options for encryption. You can either encrypt the text stream, so just a single field. You can encrypt the entire file in the sense of you pass it the file, it'll go through and encrypt every single value uh, within that file. And then the third option is actually encrypting the entire file. So it'll actually kick out a file um, that has the encryption of both the key and the values within that file. For this example, I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to encrypt a single string within the, within the property file, but you can you know configure this depending on how you want for your project. Okay, so once you download that file, uh, you'll have to jump into the command line and run this command to actually encrypt a specific string. So there's a couple fields that you'll pass in here. So the first one, of course, is uh, the method. In this case, we're just going to be encrypting a string. The operation can either be encrypt or decrypt. And then the algorithm, the mode, these are what default to what you've set up within the secure property configuration. So in this case, I have it set to AES and CBC. Uh, within the um, the documentation, 
it has Blowfish and CVC. So make sure that if you copy and paste this into your terminal screen to make sure that you change those to match your encryption methods and algorithms that you've set within your project. Uh, and then the last two, of course, are the key. So this is that secure key that you're going to pass to the runtime on instantiation. And then um, the the actual value, right, mm -hmm. in terms of what you want to encrypt. And then the, the, the tool will return back uh, what that encryption is. So to make things easier for myself, what I actually do is I create a shell script. Um, and I can, I'll share this later on uh, with you guys. But within the shell script, I've gone ahead and pasted in my project or uh, my uh, the, the command that I use. I also paste in the string that I'm going to commonly use for my projects. And then I've got the, uh, you know, the, the parameter that I'm going to pass in. And with the shell script, once you have the setup, you can call this from your, your terminal uh, to encrypt any string that you want to incorporate into your project. So uh, let's go ahead and open up a command window or a terminal window. And in here, I've got the jar file and I've also got the shell script. So with the shell script, uh, what we're gonna go ahead and do is just go ahead and call it. Oh, and additionally, when you uh, copy and paste the shell script into uh, a folder with that jar file, you're gonna wanna make sure that you change the uh, uh, the permissions on this. So just type in um, chmod plus x and then the name of that file, right? And then this way it'll allow you to actually run the shell script and pass in that specific parameter. So um, for this example here, let's go ahead and run that shell script and then we'll go ahead and pass in the string that we want to, to encrypt right so in this case password once you pass that in it's going to go ahead and spit out the encrypted string for password okay so uh, in this case we're going to switch back over to studio now and in this property file we're going to go ahead and paste in that string so for any encrypted string within your 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 properties file what you need to make sure you do is wrap the encrypted string with the following. So it's a exclamation mark, square bracket, close square bracket, and then you paste in that specific string, okay? And then we'll go ahead and save this. So before we go ahead and test this now, um, there are two other things that we need to make sure we do. So back in your remove flow, um, within the configuration XML of your project, you actually need to go and change all your properties and add the following string to it. So everything has to have secure colon colon for every property that is within this secure property file. Okay, And that just lets the, 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 the component understand which properties are uh, coming from that secure property file. Um, in addition, when we set the secure properties, we configure that with another property here called secure key. This one doesn't need to have that secure key because this is the key that you're gonna set on instantiation of that meal runtime. So for that, what we wanna make sure to do, we do uh, for testing within Studio is in your configuration, so you'll go up here to either the run or the debug, click on that little carrot here, and go to run configurations. And then on the left, find that project, generally it'll go ahead and default you to that project. But just in case, make sure that you are on the correct project. And underneath the arguments uh, tab, you need to make sure that you put in the following string. So it has to be dash uh, capital D secure dot key equals and then your password that you want to, to use to decrypt that um, encrypted field within the, the property file. Okay. So once you have all that set up, you can go ahead and click on apply and then you can go ahead and run it. And now when you run it on instantiation of this meal runtime and then the deployment of that app, it's going to use that secure key to decrypt the field and then, um, you know, set up the configuration properties for that database component. Okay. So we'll give it a couple more seconds here to spin up and then now it's deployed and it's using those credentials now. Okay. So let's switch over to a browser now and go ahead and navigate to that uh, URL and see it working. Okay, so now you can see that uh, we've secured those properties for that project. So now that we've tested it in Studio, the next thing we want to go ahead and kind of show you is um, how to secure the properties when you deploy them into Cloud Hub. Okay, uh, in order to do that, what you need to actually do is open up another file, and we need to open up the mule artifact.json file. So if you open this up, file up, um, you actually need to go in here and add in a new field 
called secure properties and in the secure properties field you need to have, have an array of the fields that you want to uh, hide in Cloud Hub when they're being displayed. So instead of them showing up in plain text, when a, uh, a user opens up the property for that project, it'll actually show a hidden password field. Okay, so in here I've gone ahead and put in DB password, and I've also gone ahead and put in secure dot key uh, just to show you an example. So let's go ahead and save this, and close this for now, and close this as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and deploy this now to Cloud Hub. Um, keep in mind that the process I'm going to walk through within this video is, um, you know, manually deploying it using AnyPoint Studio. Uh, best practices: we uh, recommend that you use the Mule Maven plugin to deploy the application through a CI/CD pipeline. Right, that way you can kind of automate um, the deployment and and do the testing. Uh, but the, again, for the sake of this video, we're going to go ahead and manually deploy this into Cloud Hub. So. Uh, within the project, we'll go ahead and uh, click on property, uh, right click on it, um, go to any point platform, deploy to Cloud Hub, and it's going to bring me this window. And in this window, we're going to want to make sure that we go to the properties and everything else checks out. We're going to go to the properties tab and we're going to go ahead and uh, click on list and we're going to add in the key. So this is the key that we want to make sure that we pass in in order to decrypt that secure property. And this will be in of course plain text. And then let's go ahead and add in just another one for an example. So if we type in key here and click on deploy application now, this will go ahead and deploy the application to Cloud Hub with that, uh, the key that's needed to go ahead and decrypt the file. So uh, we'll give this a couple seconds and once it's deployed, we'll go ahead and check out the settings within Cloud Hub. Okay, so now that the project is deployed to Runtime Manager, uh, let's go ahead and open up that project in the browser. So now that we're here, you can see that that application has been deployed successfully. It's up and running and started. If we click on that application and go into the Settings tab and then click on Properties, you can see that the uh, field that we added into that Mule uh, artifact.json file, right? If we're gonna close this window here and open up that artifact file. These correspond to the fields that we want to mask here in the Cloud Hub uh, Runtime Manager. So if we go and add in, say for example, the, the database password field right, that we added into that list, uh, initially it will be plain text. Once we tab out of it, it's going to go ahead and hide that field. So the idea behind this is that um, any field that you add into the secure properties will be hidden in the display within Runtime Manager. Okay. So hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, it walked through the process of setting up secure properties within your project. Uh, it showed you how to test that project within AnyPoint Studio by passing in secure, secure key. And then lastly, we'll, we walked through the process of deploying that into Cloud Hub um, and ensuring that those secure property keys or those secure uh, fields aren't visible to other users when you make those modifications, okay? Um, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment in the, in the comment box below. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks.